Well, hello and welcome to Walking in the Light, our weekly discussion of the Seventh Day Adventist Adult Lesson Study. This week we study lesson number seven. It's entitled Jesus, the Anchor of the Soul. Jesus, the Anchor of the Soul. It's part of a wider series looking at the message of Hebrews for our time. We want to invite you, as usual, to invite a friend, grab your Bibles, your quarterlies, and study along with us as we explore this week's topic, Jesus, the anchor of the soul. We'll be concentrating our effort in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11 down to Hebrews chapter 6, uh, verse 20. So, please... Grab your Bibles, study along with us. Remember, you can get your own quarterly by going to the website, absg.adventist.org. Click on the link and you'll be able to download your own copy. It promises to be a very interesting study. Jesus, the anchor of the soul. Will your anchor hold? Let's stay with us. We'll be right back after a few moments. Well, thanks for staying with us here on Walking in the Light. We're studying lesson number seven, Jesus, the anchor of the soul. We begin with our memory verse, followed by a word of prayer. Elder Gordon, would you bring us our memory verse? And Elder Bell, would you lead us into a word of prayer? The memory verse is taken from Hebrews 19 verses, Hebrews 6 verses 19 and 20. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both secure and steadfast, of which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become the high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Oh God and Father, we have come to you with assurance and confidence that you who have begun a work in us, for us, and through us will secure us to eternity. May the study this week, as we focus on Jesus being our anchor, that we will be assured that though the billows roll and the storms may come, we are assured of security because we are anchored in no other than Jesus Christ. Bless the study. Open our minds, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Jesus, the anchor of the soul. Hello, Thomas, I want us to begin our lesson in a little different fashion tonight or today. We are going to go to Hebrews chapter 12. And I want you to read the first uh, four, uh, three verses there for us. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 begins, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse three, for consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. All right, mm -hmm. Elder Gordon, what is the writer trying to get his readers to do from these verses of scripture? What is he doing? Well, you know, um, we are in a race. And um, it's not if we finish first, it's that we endure to the end. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ had come to save us from sin. And, um, you know, we have to make sure that we continue to serve him, even though that we 
uh, um, are in problems, even though we are inflicted by circumstances, even though we are persecuted, we have to make sure that we stay in this race because there is no other way that we can abstain salvation except through Jesus Christ. All right. So the writer is essentially doing what Elder Thomas here. He's encouraging the, the members to mm -hmm. keep focus, mm -hmm. keep mm -hmm. your eyes fixed on Jesus. Yeah. So what was the danger then, Elder Bell? What was the danger? It's always important that we keep the situation that was confronting the Hebrews in front of us mm -hmm. and what the writer was trying to do in front of us so that we get the right message so that we can apply it accordingly. So what was the danger facing the Hebrews then? What was the one mistake that the writer did not want them to make? Setting anything as priority mm -hmm. over the gospel mm -hmm. and the relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's saying, um, even if it is good and desirable, let nothing take priority over the relationship you have established with Jesus Christ. All right. And so he's encouraging them to hold on to the faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Hold on to the sure yeah. promises of God. Yeah. Hold on to Jesus. And in verse 3, again, Elder Thomas, he tells them to consider Jesus. Yes. Consider him, lest you become weary yes. and lose faith. Because right. if that happens, if you abandon Jesus, everything is over. That's right. Yeah, and remind, in, in saying that, is reminding them that he himself suffered um, and, and he did not give up. Mm. And he's faithful. So we too, as we suffer, we must keep our focus and our faith in him. Absolutely. And so throughout the book, the writer is bent on encouraging. He's using every means at yes. his disposal yes. to get across this message. Hold on to your faith in Jesus mm. and to press on. This week, we're going to see that he uses a warning. That's right. And then he uses another exhortation to challenge them mm -hmm. to apply the teaching which yes. teaching we would have studied last week would that of Christ being the high priest. The high priest mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Who secures our eternal salvation. Yes. And on the basis of that now, he brings to a warning mm -hmm. and an exhortation to challenge them so that they will not lose faith. Elder Thomas. That's right. That's Absolutely. Right. Elder Thomas, uh, when you get a warning, how do you respond to it? <laughs> Take heed. I, I <laughs> usually, um, if I get a warning, consider that it is something necessary for me to um, not to fall in danger, mm -hmm. but to apply the warning so that I can escape whatever danger is ahead. So there's a warning to heed. Yes. I love that. I love what you said. Take heed. Because yeah. this is exactly what the writer is saying to the children. Elder Bell, there is a warning to heed. Yes. And yeah. Elder Bell, if you get an exhortation, an encouragement, how are you supposed to respond to that? Oh, grab it with open arms. Mm. Because it's, it's, it's going to support um, the evidence I've had. Yeah. And not only that, I'll be encouraged to go forward. Absolutely. Because um, it's a motivator. Yeah. Yes. I can't feel it's a motivator. All right, God. Especially if you get a warning from, from God, because God knows everything. He knows yeah. the beginning from the end. Yes. So if you get a warning from God, you have to make sure that you heed, take heed to the warning. Yeah. Because God knows that something is going to happen mm. if you don't take that warning. Absolutely. All right. And um, I like that because that's where we're going. There's a warning to heed. Heed the warning. Mm. And there's an exhortation to obey. Mm. There's an encouragement to yes. obey. Carry on, all right? So let's start it out on Hebrews chapter four, chapter six, verses four and five, Elder Gordon. I notice it, the lesson begins in Hebrews chapter six, verses four and five. Let's see what is being said there. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened mm -hmm. and have tasted of the heavenly gift mm -hmm. and were not, I were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. 
All right. You know what, Elder Gordon? Read from verse 1. I want <laughs> us to get the context because you won't pick up yeah. the warning unless you get the True. context. So let's go back to verse 1 and read from there. <laughs> Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works mm -hmm. and of faith towards God, mm -hmm. of the doctrine of baptism and of the laying on our hands and the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. This will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. All right, so let's break the text apart a little bit before we go into the discussion. Verse one, begin by doing what, Elder Thomas? What would you say the writer is there appealing to his readers to do again in light of what he has taught them about the high priest, the ministry mm -hmm. of the Son of God? All right, so he is telling them the things that you have already learned. You must practice that and grow from there. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's that's where you begin. Absolutely. Can't stay there. Mm -hmm. You've learned something. Practice that, and you grow from there. Absolutely. So don't stay where you are, Elder Bell. Let's grow in that knowledge and that's grow right. in the application of that scriptural truth in our lives. So we make the connection now in verse four. Mm -hmm. So this is the exhortation that I'm giving you. Why am I giving you this exhortation? Because here comes the warning. So let's read verse four again. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened mm -hmm. and have tasted of the heavenly gift mm -hmm. and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. All right. Let's read, carry on, Elder Gordon. And have tasted the good word of God and mm -hmm. the powers of the world to come. Mm -hmm. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open. All right. So what's the warning, Elder Thomas? The warning is... Hold fast to what you have received. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't lose it mm -hmm. uh, because you cannot go back mm -hmm. to start over again. Okay. All right. And if it is in the case, if it is possibly in the case or in the case that you should move from this position to one where you find yourself having tasted of the good gift of God and so forth to renounce Christ, it is impossible to renew again unto repentance. repentance yes. That's the warning. It is danger that yeah. lies ahead, a great danger, because go ahead, Elo. I was going to suggest that the proverb is saying that the, the dog with the bone mm -hmm. in the river, mm -hmm. he had a real bone in his mouth. <laughs> but when he got to the river, he saw it appears that he, the bone in the river was bigger yeah. than his bone. Uh -huh. Reflection. And so in, in effort to get the bigger bone, he opened his mouth to grab and lost the bone he had and mm -hmm. the, the imaginary bone wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And Paul is saying to them, there is no other or better method than you have established with the relationship you have with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because it's impossible to find another source of relationship to the God of heaven, okay. except that which you have had through Jesus Christ. Okay, all right. So the warning comes out of that, the very important warning. Yeah. Because yeah. If this were to be the case, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. it is impossible, that's mm -hmm. the warning, mm -hmm. to renew yeah. such a one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we will look at that unto repentance again. So that is the warning, an exhortation. Let us go on. That's right. And it's immediately followed by a warning. What is the warning is great danger. Yes. If this happens, it's over. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Impossible, yeah. if in the case, all right? So let's explore some of the phrases now, because in verses 4 to 5, uh, the writer seems to suggest that these are some of the blessings, see, mm -hmm. some of the experiences that attend someone who is saved, someone who has experienced yes. the new birth, mm -hmm. all right? So let's read verses 4 to 5 again, Elder Gordon. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened mm -hmm. and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Okay. So first thing, Elder Thomas, he says, those who are saved have been enlightened. Enlightened. What does he yeah. mean by yeah. enlightened in the Bible? Yes. 
they have now moved from from darkness to light, mm -hmm. which is now seeing um, salvation with God has provided. It's it's looking at at um, life from a different point of view. Mm -hmm. Light has turned on. God has turned on the light on sin, and now you have recognized what is sin, and you are now walking in the light of God that is presented by the Word. All right, let's read Hebrews chapter ten, verse thirty-two, to bring us a little. More uh, clarity on that, Hebrews 10, verse 32. Yeah. Before we go there, um, Brother Kim, um, you know, it's an experience, a personal experience mm -hmm. of the gospel that you have heard. Okay. So it's impossible for you to turn away from that. That's what um, you were saying. Oh, okay. Chapter 10, verse 32. Yes, sir. I have to go right ahead, Elder Thomas. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after ye were illuminated, mm -hmm. ye endured a great fight of affliction all right Amen. so illuminated or enlightened right. same concept same call to, to to remembrance after you were enlightened that's, that's again right. they were converted exactly all right and god that who did they illuminate themselves certainly not how did that illumination <laughs> come about whose work is that that's the work of the holy spirit that's the work of the yeah. holy spirit For when the holy spirit comes he will convict you of sin mm -hmm. of righteousness and of the judgment mm. all right okay so again it implies deliverance from from sin and ignorance as elder thomas was mm -hmm. saying and again it is important to understand that the enlightening mm -hmm. is an act of god achieved yes. through Jesus, yeah. the brightness of his glory. All right. So it also talks about tasting the heavenly gift and have tasted the heavenly gift and become partakers of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean, Elder Bell? Uh, it, it could have two applications. Okay. It could, Paul could be referring back to the willingness experience where they were fed by manna from heaven and they tasted of heavenly food. It could mean that. It could also mean uh, you have seen and experienced the miracles mm -hmm. of God. Okay. And those can only be wrought from heaven. Okay. And so you've tasted and seen miracles that was outside of humanity's ability to achieve and accomplish. Okay. And, uh, and so having experienced that, what more do you want? Or what more do you, why can't you make this be the platform of your faith? And uh, or the other one, like I said, he may have gone back to the wilderness experience and brought him a bit of history of how God provided in the Exodus. For the Israelite then? Then. Okay. 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 Because the current generation would not, would not have, have had, had that man. Okay. But he would refer to it as okay. an example of the miracles from God. Okay. Elder Thomas, what do you make of that? The tasted of the heavenly gift. What is this heavenly gift? We, we would have seen also that um, the Holy Spirit um, after Pentecost, mm -hmm. where the Holy Spirit came down and um, they were given gifts, the, 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 everyone who would accept. Who gave the them life. the gift? The Holy? The Holy Spirit. So the Holy gifts. Spirit itself came as a gift. As a gift. And then he and gave gifts. Gave gifts oh. also. So they, that, that two things that happened mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and that um, grace was expressed mm. in such a fashion. Yes. And so they would have tasted that, they would have experienced that. As mm -hmm. Bell was saying about miracles too, they would have also um, experienced miracles. So those were gifts that there is no um, doubt, there could be no doubt as to um, the provision that God has made through salvation because mm -hmm. he has already said that he would send the Holy Spirit to seal that, that, that faith in us that we have the salvation is guaranteed. All right, so Gordon, the writer suggests that uh, to have tasted of the heavenly gift and to become partakers of the holy calling is the same thing, one and the same thing, different ways of saying the same thing. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you share that thought? That yeah, opinion? I mean, the, the experience that they got from even in the past um, of the old patriarchs and um, you know, people who came before them, mm -hmm. they heard about the miracles that God had done and, um, you know, the gifts that were um, experienced by them. And so they too now um, have experienced the holy gift that God has given them. And so what Paul is saying is that you have received the gift. I know that you're going through afflictions and, 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 and situations, but God is still with you. That's what he's saying. 
Okay. All right. So to have tasted the Holy Spirit and to have experienced the grace of God, which includes the power to fulfill his will. It also talks about the taste, the goodness of the word of God. What is that, Elder Bell? How do you understand that? And it, the, the word of God is the word of prophecy and the fulfillment of God's promises. I mean, let's face it. In a lot of days, perilous times will come. But that wasn't the latter day. That was then. So okay, then what, what did it says, mean that they Paul would have said to the Hebrews yes. that the temple is going to be broken down, and they couldn't imagine that the temple or Jesus has said the temple is going to be broken down, and they couldn't imagine the temple being destroyed. Okay. And Paul says, just as the goodness of God to save people from sin, and he may have looked back at things like Nineveh, he may have looked back like Jonah and the Ark, uh, he may have looked back at Lot and his family. He may have drawn from the patriarch's experience and said the word was spoken and God in his mercy provided for them. He may have even gone back to Genesis 3.15 that God had promised a way of salvation okay. and the word came true. And Isaiah predicted in the fullness of time, God would send forth a savior in Jesus Christ and that came to pass. Okay. So all those were the goodness of the word. The goodness of the word. Yes. But they would not have experienced that yet, would they? Oh, he would have experienced Jesus coming. Okay. Yes, because okay. he was promised and he came. Okay. <laughs> All right, Elder Bell. All right. Elder Thomas, um, First Peter chapter yeah. 2, verses 2 and 3. Elder God, if you could find that. In the meantime there, First Peter chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. We have some insight there, if you will read that. And Elder Thomas, while he's reading that, you get ready to answer the same question. What does it mean to have experience or taste the goodness of the Word of God? You have it, Elder God? First Peter, chapter, chapter two. 2, verses 2 and 3. Go right ahead. You have it? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that ye may go thereby. Mm -hmm. If so, by ye have tasted, the Lord is gracious. Amen. All right, so Elder mm. Thomas, have you tasted of the goodness of the Word of God? Yes, yes. Um, and as, as um, Peter puts it here, um, in reference to um, a babe needing milk mm -hmm. um, to sustain and to grow, um, it's, it's speaking about an experience, a personal experience with the Word of God, w what happens. And, and I believe the Hebrews, um, they would have received such words like, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so that would have brought them to beginning to experience in God's love for them in accepting those words. Right. And um, I'm sure that there would be many more um, exhortation that yeah. they would have received. And seeing God working through those, his words were true to them in their own experiences. That's right. part of tasting, I believe. Okay, all right. Are these experiences unique to people who have been saved or do unbelievers have these experiences already. Look, let's look at some of them. They've, you've, you've tasted the goodness of the word of God. Mm. You've tasted of the Holy Spirit. You've tasted of the, 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 the powers of the age that mm -hmm. is to come. You are partakers of the heavenly gift mm -hmm. and um, tasted of the Holy Spirit. Are these experiences that unbelievers encounter also? Oh, yes. Um, they, 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 like everybody else, were offered the gift of salvation. Okay. Because the Bible says he came not to save the righteous, but sinners to repent, bring to repentance. Mm -hmm. And he came that all might have eternal life. Right. And a, a classical example, here was a heathen who wasn't a believer, reading an experience on the word mm -hmm. in the eunuch okay. with Philip, mm -hmm. going on his merry way back to Ethiopia, encountered the goodness of God in the word, and he said, who can do this? Where is this from? Who are they talking about? And God sent Philip to enlighten him, and he'll come back to our lesson study, enlighten him to give him understanding. And when he realized what it really meant, the goodness of the word mm -hmm. converted him. Okay, all right. So I'm following your elder Bell mm -hmm. by saying that a sinner yes. who has come to salvation in yes, Christ experienced mm -hmm. these Blessings of salvation. That's right. Yes, yes. That's it. absolutely. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's why we, uh, as Christians, yes. are here to enlighten them, yeah. to bring them to Christ. And when they come and receive the word, 
they also will be like all right yeah right. I, I you know um <laughs> i i think the, there's a process that we see going on there that's and right, i, I that's think right. very <laughs> yeah. well, yes. quite nicely mm-hmm. um we we are even sinners who would not have accepted christ yet mm-hmm. would have tasted some at least something mm-hmm. um because god said he draws us with his loving kindness and yes. so his goodness towards us is what brings us mm-hmm. to him um but paul speaks of so many different things that exactly. he would have tasted so you see the process that brings you from one point to another, to another point, point right yeah absolutely but these are critical experiences yes mm-hmm. yes these are transforming experiences exactly. these That's are right. things That's that right. move you from That's one right. realm into another yes, yes. Uh, these are things that signal you have a true conversion experience yes Amen. that's right these that's are right. things that signal the spirit of god mm-hmm. has used the word of god mm. to implant the new birth of christ within yes. you yes. and is doing a work of oh. salvation in other words the richness and the fullness of these blessings are to those who have that salvation experience or as he says to nicodemus yeah. you must be born again Yes, God. You want I think that say. the word of God is really penetrating a lot of people out there who are not saved. I heard a story about um, uh, this gentleman who got a copy of the Great Controversy. He always said that there is no God; he's an atheist. And after reading the Great Controversy, he said there is really a God. Mm-hmm. And so God is using His Spirit in different ways to bring others, people who are not saved, to His glory. Mm. Right. So. The question for us is, um, what has been our experience with these things that these verses in Hebrews have talked about? For instance, have you experienced the enlightening that the text refers to? Elder Thomas, I know that certainly I have experienced the enlightening that this word uh, refers to. It has shown me who God is, and it has shown me clearly who I am, Mm. sinner to the core. (laughs) <laughs> and it has shown me clearly that the only way of escape yes. is through Jesus Christ, That's the right. Son of God, my high yeah. priest, my apostle, the one who, through his perfect sacrifice, mm. now yes. intercedes on my behalf, therefore giving me the absolute assurance yes. of salvation through faith in him. And yeah. it's by his spirit daily, daily. Right conforming me to the image of his dear son. What has been your experience, Elder? Uh, Elder, um, <laughs> I, I, I could say the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said it so nicely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's, it's great um, to have that, that peace that you know comes from the Holy Spirit's direction. Mm. Um, day after day, choices that you have to make, decisions, stuff that you have to do, and and you call upon God, and He answers. It's that assurance that that you can always call on God for anything because He knows. And and remembering at times, sometimes you we baffle over things. I baffle over things sometimes, and then I remember. But God knows it, yes, <laughs> and, yes. and He has it under control. Yeah. And then I relax. Because I'm enlightened again, yes. reminded of the goodness of God and how he's able to do All impossible right. things. You know, Acts 4, 12 says, um, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven, among given among men where we might be saved. Mm-hmm. There's no other way than the way of Jesus. There's no other way of salvation. No angel, no man, no other way but through Jesus Christ mm. himself. You, you know, like him, and, and the, uh, it's an encouragement as well, the goodness of the word of God and the expressions of Paul to the Hebrews uh, actually speaks to people who once walked with God and had a fallout experience. And who can be more classically um, evident than David? Right. In Psalm 51 and Psalm 32, David expressed what the word meant when Nathan came to him. And from that point, David became a transformed, enlightened leader and patriarch of, 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 of the gospel mm. and, and um, of God himself. And so even for those of us who may have had difficulties in our experience, the word can be an enlightenment, an encouragement yeah. of the goodness of God yeah. that Every will time. bring us better understanding. All right. So, Elder Bell, you said the word was written to people who had fallen out. 
foreign. The word foreign out. They, they, they had a broken relationship. Okay, with, so you are of the view yes. that they had a broken relationship with Jesus Christ? Who's that? The Hebrews. They they want to who the letter. In fact, written. Paul said to them, "If you don't stop now and consider Jesus as your uncle, mm -hmm. you're going to have a slippery slide slope, mm. and you could be in serious problem." All right. So how do you explain verse 9 mm -hmm. of that text? If it is true that these people had fallen into that state, how do you explain verse 9 that says, Dear friends, even though we are talking this way, which yeah. seems to me that the writer is speaking hypothetically, we really don't believe it applies to you. In fact, we are confident that you are meant for better things, things that go along with salvation. And then he goes on to say, for God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him. In exactly. other words, you have produced things that have showed your salvation and um, how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Mm -hmm. So our great desire then is that you keep on loving others as long as life lasts and that you show the same diligence, same eagerness that you had in showing Christ's love when you became saved, you apply the same diligence in holding on to your faith exactly. and trusting Jesus to the end. And yeah. then, that verse, doesn't verse, sound to me like people who have been No, but, for, but follow verse 12. Let's mm -hmm. look at verse 12. Mm -hmm. That, in, um, from King James Earl, mm -hmm. that he be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience yes. inherit the promise. Right, so that you're not slow. Slow don't mean you're unsaved. No, no, no. But it also mm -hmm. means if you're not careful, mm -hmm you could become weary. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you can't, you can't take it out of context. Because when we, the beginning of Hebrew, mm -hmm. Paul says you had many troubles. Mm -hmm. You've been persecuted. Right. And many of you are letting go of the promises in the beginning of Hebrew. Paul says many of you, many of you have become weakened right. in your faith. Right. And so as not to let go. I'm re-encouraging you to stay confident right. that Jesus is still there. But you're saying so as not to let go. That's right. So they haven't let go. Well, the word, um, when you mm -hmm. say you have a broken relationship, okay. it's, not, it's not secured. Oh. It's your shit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not careful with yeah. that. I mean, you could have, yeah. you could have, you could have um, what we call a weak experience with God. Right. It doesn't mean that you have truthfully severed. <laughs> But unless you strengthen it, you will break. You see how this text is speaking? <laughs> some right, hold right. the view that this is a hypothetical. Yeah. Uh -huh. right, right. How is it that you could have come to such an experience? Uh -huh. Right? Uh, in other words, he's saying to have reached this stage mm. and have received these things. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right? It's evidence of your salvation. Yes. Yeah. Now, if it... But, but let's read the text. Let's continue in the text and we will come to that. Let's continue exactly. in the text. So you have tasted the goodness of God. It's impossible to restore. Let's look at impossible to restore now. Gordon, let's read those verses again. Verse Hebrews nine. 6, 4 to 6. 4 to 6. Yes, Hebrews 6, 4 to 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened uh -huh. and have tasted of the heavenly gift mm -hmm. and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh uh -huh. and put him to open shame. So what's that big phrase there? If they shall fall away. I think Paul was speaking to the people who were faithless, going through persecution and uh -huh. have their problems. Uh -huh. And they were weak. Okay. And because of the persecution that they were going through at yeah. the time, Paul is encouraging them yeah. and telling them, you can't go back there. You have tasted the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's, in, it's, a, it's not good for you to go down that road. Stay faithful yeah. to Christ. Now, Thomas, how do you <laughs> reason that? If <laughs> yeah. you um, fall away. I, 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 I see it as, um, again, recognizing the, the seriousness of, of what they were going through, that yeah, they were being weakened. It, it, it's, it's like somebody who perhaps, um, let's say, for instance, they were in a tree um, and, and they're picking fruits, whatever. A limb break with them and they're holding on. They're holding on. They're still holding on. Mm. Just don't let go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like don't that. let go. Yes, yes, yes. It, it looks like if 
you know, you, you're going to go down, yeah. but don't let go. Uh -huh. Just keep holding on. Absolutely. Because it's going to be possible yeah. if you let go to yeah. get back up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so, a powerful so, analogy. Right? So, powerful just analogy. keep holding on. Yeah. Yeah. So, Matthew chapter 16 and verse, uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 6, Elder Bell, Elder Thomas, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Elder Gordon, mm -hmm. because the writer here is making, asking the question, what does this comparison suggest about what it means to crucify Christ? Because he says, if you do that, you crucify Christ again. So mm -hmm. let's read those verses. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Yes. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. All right. So there's there the whole concept of self-denial. If any yes, man sir. will come, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. All right. Romans, Romans 6, 6, verse 6, Elder Bell. Yes. And it says, knowing this, mm -hmm. that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. All right. So again, it's crucifixion <laughs> of the old man, <laughs> right? Old man. Dying to self. Absolutely. All right. Ella Thomas, Galatians you have one? 2 and mm. verse 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. All right. So... The writer makes two points here. He says salvation, okay, he begins by saying that Paul wants to stress that there is no other way of salvation except through Christ. Mm. Exactly. Salvation by any other means is as impossible Possible. as it is for God to lie mm -hmm. or to please God without faith. We yes. agree on that? Yes. 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 All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then he also says to crucify again the Son of God is a figurative expression that yeah. seeks to describe something that happens in the personal relationship between so, Jesus and the believer. And, the believer. and he goes on to say that it, it is, this passage does not refer to the person who sometimes fails mm. in the battle against the old man mm -hmm. and the flesh. Mm -hmm. This sin refers to the person who after experienced genuine salvation, and what it implies decides that Jesus is a threat to the kind of life he or she wants to have mm. and moves to kill their relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That is, as long as the person does not fully choose to turn away from Christ, there is still a hope of salvation. Amen. What say you to that, gentlemen? You know, that, that, that sounds like um, um, move from self, sounds like Satan. Satan, who actually wanted to take away God's position. Mm -hmm. So he becomes God's enemy. He don't want anything to do with God. And, you know, self is, is like that. Mm -hmm. It's like a struggle between Jesus Christ and self. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle to death. Okay. And that's what happened to the great Satan. Mm -hmm. He wanted to take away God's position. And so he struggled with Christ until Christ was uh, victorious mm -hmm. at the cross. Hello, Thomas, what have you got to say about that? those two <laughs> understandings of what it means to crucify Christ? It's, it's interesting, but um, I can see it where uh, a person who would have accepted Christ would have even received gifts of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. ministering, you know, um, in whatever area that God had called them to minister. And then decided at some point in their lives, whether becoming proud or whatever, that they now didn't want any control of God over their life. Mm -hmm. And they would have turned away to the point of even becoming an atheist. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that, that that's where the danger is, is in leaving that um, position and going back to serve the, the devil or to serve self. Um, and whereby, on the other hand, um, we, we struggle from time to time and sometimes we make the, 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 the wrong choice. Even sometimes presumptuously make the wrong choice. But we're not letting go of God. We, we're still holding on. And, and, and we go back and we said, yes, we made a mistake. And, and uh, we ask for forgiveness and we're not letting go. So you see, there's a difference with that person and the person who would have decided, hey, look, I, I no longer believe in any God anymore. Mm. Okay, Elabel, what, what say you on that? I want to pick up on something that Ella Thomas just said. He says the person who had a strong relationship with God 
fell off, fell away by the side in terms of make a mistake. Then he comes to himself and says, listen, like the prodigal son, mm. I've made a mistake. Let me go back to my father. But the person who says, when he makes a mistake, I don't need to go back to God to correct it. I can find a correction for him. And then Paul says that is impossible for him to find salvation through any other means. For he's established already that the one mean of salvation is Jesus Christ. And so even if he seeks salvation and does not come back to the one source which he was exposed to and connected with, it's impossible for him to find salvation through any other means. Mm. And so it's not that he can't find salvation, but he cannot find salvation through any other means, having tasted of the of redemption in Jesus already. All right. And so, another example um, is that Peter denied um, Christ, yeah. but he went back and asked for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Judas went out and hung himself. So there was no salvation possible for Judas because he didn't want to go back to Jesus. He went and hung himself. But isn't the fact that Judas hung himself an indication that he was never converted in the first place? That is also possible. And the fact that Peter went back was proof that he had been converted. In the yeah, first he, Peter could have made a choice not to, not to go back, mm. but he went back because of the fact that something in him, yeah. the spirit was still working in him. But mm. the spirit of, um, against Judas, I mean, seems like it left him because he went <laughs> over to hang himself. <laughs> but look at the text now, and, 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 and look at the, what text is there. Verse 6 says, and who then turns away from God? Mm. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to bring such person back to repentance to that complete change of thought mm. and attitude about sin and God and righteousness, all right? Since by rejecting the Son of God, hmm, they are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to public shame. Mm -hmm. Could there be that they are saying that the sacrifice of Christ the Son of Christ mm. has not, is not sufficient, is not effective to complete my mm. salvation. And therefore, I am letting go of that. Yes, um, and maybe not so much words, but in action. There you go. Uh, I, I think Paul was speaking specifically to the action that yes. speaks louder than words. That's right. But that is what would happen if yeah. a person would reach to that point where the Holy Spirit was, was um, using them in such fashion. Right. They, they, they would have understood, they would have experienced God. Yeah. And then when you go back from God or turn away from God, how could you get back to that place when you have now rejected the only thing that could bring you to God or have, having exactly. that experience? How yeah. could you then return? And Christ is not going back to the cross a second time. Exactly. Because his once and for so, all yes, sacrifice yes, yes. So, has paid perfectly. So to reject that is in a sense to say mm. that the sacrifice of Christ is not finished, it's not complete, it's not total, and is therefore to repudiate or to cast shame, mm. to hold up what Christ has says, has done for you as ineffective, mm -hmm. shameful, because yeah. he has to go back the second time. What do you think about that? Yeah. Well, you know, Brother Kem, um, even though you walk away from Christ, because there's a lot of people out there who were a Christian and they walk away from Christ, mm -hmm. but the Spirit is always wooing them back. Mm -hmm. He's always calling them back, even though that they have fallen away. Yeah. Some have fallen away for years, right. but the Holy Spirit is still pursuing them. So is there a difference between apostasy and slipping, because remember, what is the danger here? Mm. Is to abandon faith in yes. Christ, the finished yes. work of Christ that yes. he has accomplished for them. He become the son of God, mm. the sinless lamb, who becomes the high priest himself, the ultimate sacrifice, himself the ultimate priest, himself providing for them eternal salvation. To abandon faith in that, holding mm. that, to go back, to the rudiments of Judaism, sacrificing animal yes. and goat, and now yes. depending on priests and stuff like that. So in the context of that, Tommy, what, what do you have to say? Yeah. It, it goes back to, to the point of having that kind of 
revelation, being enlightened, mm -hmm. understanding. This is not a place where, because today we have a lot of people who yes. say we're Christians. Yes. And, and we have, some of us are not enlightened mm -hmm. to that point of understanding exactly what salvation mm -hmm. is. Right. And so sometimes the devil snatch away people very early in mm -hmm. their Christian experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they might go back out into the world yeah. and God is still working with them. Yeah. But to reach to that level, that place where you would have had that total understanding of what this means. And then to leave that, again, like you were saying, it, it's, it's as if you want to crucify Christ to be crucified again for you to come back, which uh, is not going to happen. Your poor is gone and his sacrifice. <laughs> yes, that's right. Absolutely. Right. Okay. All right. Well, God, make your point, then we're so, going to so go to Hebrews actually, chapter 10, yeah. 26 to 29 to bring some light on this. Some people actually go back out in the world, but they've gone too far. So they never came back. So just like the devil has gone so far, he will never come back. Some people reject Christ who never come back to Christ. Okay. And so they crucify um, the Holy Spirit and they will never come back to Christ. Uh, did David reject Christ? Yes, he did. You would say but, David rejected well, Christ? Well, at, well mm. at the time when he was with the, the thing with Bathsheba, mm. I mean, he, he didn't really reject Christ, right. but what I'm saying is that he um, was selfish. Yeah. He wanted to do something on his own, okay. and, but he came back to Christ because the Spirit of God was still with him. All right. All right. Let's read Hebrews. <laughs> Elabel, I'm coming to you now. Let's read Hebrews chapter 10. Let me go to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 to 29. A similar warning, similar warning. Notice what he says. For if we go on sinning deliberately. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean in the context of the study? Right. Remember, Christ is the high priest. Yes. Come boldly now. Don't go back to Judaism. Hold on to your faith in Christ. Yeah. Hold on to the promise of eternal salvation that we have in Christ. To go on sinning then would be to go back to Judaism. Mm. Renounce faith in Christ. Yeah. And go back to that. If we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, mm -hmm. what is the truth? Mm -hmm. The writer has been painting the truth to them, yes. which Jesus Christ himself, the son of God, has come down mm -hmm. and proclaimed to them this great salvation. Yes. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? There no longer remains a sacrifice of sin. Mm. Because blood of animals and goats can't do it. That's right. Stocks and bonds can't do it. Mm. Your prayers from now until three years to come can't do it. Do it. Yes. There is only one way, and it is through the blood of Jesus Christ, That's right. which Christ, our high priest and our big brother and the Son of God and our apostle has already done for us. So it's holding yes. to faith in that. That's right. That's Absolutely. Right. It's holding to faith in that. Yes. So... If we do that, there remains no more sacrifice of sin. So mm -hmm. you see where the real danger yeah, yes. is? We're renouncing yeah. Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Failing um, to trust in his finished work for exactly. your salvation. I was going to interject yeah. here that we have come to a time where we have to be very careful that intellectual research mm -hmm. and um, assertion yeah. could cause us to dethrone Christ yeah. and make him less than who he is. Mm -hmm. And say, oh, he's just another man, a good yeah. man that passed. Right. There's danger having received Christ as your personal savior. To then suggest Christ is no longer the person who he is, the mm. son of God, the high mm. priest, the, uh, the um, brother redeemer, the kingship redeemer. He is no longer the savior. Uh, as far as I say, Muhammad is just as good as him. When you dethrone God from, from that level, to bring him as less than his, his authoritative role, when he was installed at the right hand of God. It means, therefore, there is no other sacrifice remaining for you because that is the only plan of salvation. The only plan of salvation is through Christ. That's right. Christ alone mm. is a sacrifice, all right? Yeah. So the text goes on to say, anyone, if you do that, mm. verse 27, there remains no more a sacrifice for sin, verse 26, but rather... Mm -hmm. A fearful expectation of judgment mm -hmm. and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Now, verse 28 goes on to paint a picture, mm -hmm. do a similar comparison. Yes. He says, anyone who has set aside the law of Moses, mm -hmm. that is even with the killing of the animals and stuff like that, they yes. suffered penalty, yes. yeah. died without mercy yes. on the evidence of two or three witnesses. Mm -hmm. Here is the warning. Here is him punching it home again. Exactly. How serious a thing this is to reject Jesus Christ. Yes. 
is sacrificed and to reject him as your Lord and Savior. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has spurned the Son of God mm -hmm. Hmm. and has profaned the blood mm -hmm. of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the spirit of grace? Have mercy. Yes. And, and, and that's a serious yeah. warning. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, am, I am looking at the people who are going through persecution. Yes. I'm, I'm looking at somebody who is thinking that for some reason or the other, it seems as if God is not working out for them. Mm -hmm. they, they're not escaping this persecution that they're going through. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for another way of salvation. Mm. So Paul is saying, don't let go of God because there is not another way yep. of Absolutely. salvation. Absolutely. This is the only way of salvation. So there if you, you go. let go, there is no other Absolutely. place you're going to find salvation. Absolutely. So Gordon, in view of that, the writer says, having nailed home his point with the warning, don't neglect or let go of your faith in Christ. Exactly. If you do, nothing good is in store. It's only judgment. Hold to your faith. Cling to what you have in Christ. And yeah. now he comes to the encouragement. Let's read Hebrews 9, Hebrews 6, verses 9 to 12. So mm. there's the warning. So that's the application for us. And if you are listening to us tonight and you have not yet reposed faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then this warning is for you. You stand in danger of the judgment of God. For Christ is the only way for us to be reconciled unto God. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, mm -hmm. though we speak. Mm -hmm. For God is not unrighteous yes. to forget your work and labor of love, yes. which you have showed towards his name in that he have ministered to the saints and do minister. Absolutely. So now he's turning the switch and now he's bringing on the encouragement. And notice what he says, brethren, even though we speak this way, <laughs> we are confident. We feel sure of better things mm -hmm. of you. That's what right. things? He says things that accompany salvation. In other words, there are things in your life that be evidence that you are saved. Yes. You have been saved. All right. For God is not unjust to overlook your work. Again, encouraging them, Elder Thomas. Yes, yes, yes. Letting them know yes. that. Yes. All right. So your work and the love that what you, you have been doing so far is good. What you have been doing so God far is, is good. And you're still you. doing it. Yes, still doing it. Notice verse 10. Yes. And you're serving the saints exactly. as you still do. Yes. Now here's the exaltation. The same vigor, the same way you are exercising this this and showing this evidence of salvation in this area of your life. He says, we desire each one of you to show the same effort, the same eagerness mm -hmm. to have the complete assurance of hope, mm -hmm. the complete certainty of hope until the, until end. the end. The complete yes. certainty of yes. hope that comes from what Elder Thomas. The assurance that Jesus Christ is the Savior. Just have faith in that. <laughs> hold, complete. Hold, hold have on. it so yes. solid to become so convinced yes. of this truth that yes. not even this persecution that I'm going through can knock well, me off of that. That's right. That's, that's right. the anchor. That's, that's right. what I'm holding to. Exactly. But you, if you understand the metaphor of an anchor, mm -hmm. Paul mm. speaks to, look at an anchor. An anchor is not a stiff piece of um, line or chain attached to a heavy weight, you know. It has a length of dangling or free or of mobility. So when the winds come, it seems to take it back to and from, but it can't move it beyond what is allowed. And okay. the Bible says he would not allow you to be tempted or us to be tempted beyond mm. that which we are able to bear. Yeah. So the anchor of our souls will keep us secure even though the bill is rolled. And what is the anchor of our soul? Elder? Jesus Christ is the anchor of our soul. Jesus Christ is the anchor of our soul. <laughs> Absolutely. And notice he says in verse 12, mm -hmm. so we want you to show the same diligence, Elder Thomas. In yes. other words, exercise this same effort mm -hmm. in faith. Mm -hmm. This is what I want, the effort of yeah. faith, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so that you may not be sluggish, slow to apply what you mm -hmm. learned then, mm -hmm. slow right. to take the theology off the shelf and apply it to your life in the real situation here and yes. now. 
but become imitators of those who through what? Faith mm -hmm. and patience or endurance inherit mm. the promise. See what he's calling them to do? There's an yes. exhortation to all of us mm -hmm. through faith mm. and endurance. Keep on going with that sure conviction that yes. Jesus Christ has paid it yes. all and all to him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain, but he has washed it white yes. and so. On Christ, the solid so rock, I stand. Sense. All other ground is sinking sand. Right. You know, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy, holy lean, lean on Jesus', Jesus name. name. Lean fully on that. Grab your faith in that. Mm. Anchor that. Exactly. Yes. And guess what? And you can't be moved. Can't be moved. And the guess anchor what? is not moving. That's right. This Christ is the anchor. There you go. <laughs> this type of faith is not sustained by intellectual achievements mm. or, or study, but it, it is kept in the faith in the action of love to one another. If you show love one of another, you express that connection that Paul says in Romans 8, neither height nor depth, nor principles and things present, things to come, mm. can separate you from that anchor because you're secure in the love of Jesus. All right. Hello, God, let's read six, uh, chapter 6, verses 17 to 20. Therefore, again, he's given, oh, uh, uh, Thomas, you got it, or are you? Oh, yes, this. chapter 6, verse 17. To 20, because again, mm -hmm. those who faith and endurance inherit the promise. Now he's going to give them additional weaponry All right. to Says, hold to that faith in Christ. Yes. Wherein God, mm -hmm. willing more abundantly to show <coughs> unto the ears of promise mm -hmm. the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things mm -hmm. in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, oh. which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, mm -hmm. and which entereth into that within the veil, mm -hmm. whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So in where is our anchor, Elder our Thomas? Our anchor is in Christ. And where is he right He's now? He's fastened our... at the right, right hand, hand of, of God. God. As in our what? Forerunner. In heaven. As, As our, our forerunner. forerunner. Yes. The one who has gone on before us. <laughs> That's right. And That's this right. anchor, this hope is built on the sure promise and yes. the oath of God. Yes. I do not fear because God has said, mm. Mm. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, yes. but have everlasting life. That's right. And that oath has been sealed in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why we can sing. We have an anchor mm. that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to a rock that cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Will your anchor hold? Yes, it can hold if it is grounded in the love of Christ, in the finished work of Christ, Christ is your high priest, Christ is your advocate, Christ is your sacrifice, Christ is the only one that removes the barrier and restores the relationship with Christ. And when you by faith anchor yourself in Christ, hey, your anchor will hold even in the fiercest storm of life. That's where we have to leave it. Thank you so much for studying with us on this very spirited version of walking in the light. God's willing, we will be back next week, same time, same place. Until then, may God bless you and may he keep you.